so first let's review some of what we learned in the past and then we'll study some new concepts moving forward. So first of all, how do I make a new class? Okay, I need a file first, right? Let me put that file into a package. What, how can I make a package? What's like a standard way of making a package? You make a directory, right? Typically. All right, so let's make a directory. Let's call it, um, I don't know, test. Okay, and then in this directory, let's put a class. So a class is nothing more than a file, which has a name. What is the name of the file? Same as the name of the class. Notice one more thing, that classes begin with a capital letter. Okay, so let's now make a person class, person.java. And then in here, let's do class or public. Okay, and let's say that it's in the package and let's call the package test because it happens to be in the test directory. Up until this point, did I do anything that you didn't understand? Raise your hands if there's anything you've missed so far. Huh? Could you write like zoo? So declaration package zoo does not match the expected package test. So typically you want to match it up with, um, with the name of the directory you're in. Okay. And yes. This part? Yeah, you have to say what package it's in, unless it's in the root. That's the only time where you don't have to say it because it's not in anything. So typically, yes. In all, most cases, you want to specify the package it's in. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Are we done with this part? We're good. Okay. So now let's add some members to my class. What, what are some members I can add to a person? Age. What, what is age? Okay, so I got age. Uh, should I make age a member that can be accessed from the outside world or keep it locked up in private? Yeah. So in general, by the way, when you make members, you typically want to make them private. Okay. Okay, so I make age private. Let me make, well, people have names, right? So uh, hang on, string first name. Private string last name. What was the question? Was there a question? Ah, so there's a default declaration which we will study just after we study inheritance because it has something to do with inheritance. Okay? So there are four things there's public and private, there's protected, which just means you can only access it from inside that package. And then there's like the default, which is you have to know inheritance to know what the default is. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, questions so far? How many members do I have? Good. All right. So now let me make a constructor. What is a constructor? Exactly. You can think of it as a function that gets called when the thing first is created. It's used to initialize the object. It's used to set it up. Okay, um, so let me ask you this. Suppose I don't do it. I just create a public static void main string array of whatever. And then in here, I just do new person. Is this okay? Would this work? It turns out it would. So here's the thing. Java will make a default constructor for you. The default constructor takes no arguments. So by default, person actually has a constructor and it's the same thing as this. It's basically that, okay? But I didn't make it, so by default it has it and I can use it. But I can make my own constructor. So let me go ahead and make it public person. Let me have my constructor take some arguments like the first name and the last name of the person I'm about to make. 
first name, string, last name. So now notice I can no longer call person with no arguments because is there a constructor that takes no arguments? No, there's only one constructor and it requires two arguments, first name and last name. So I have to pass in a first name, say Joe, and a last name of, let's say Jackson. Now it's okay. So notice my constructor here doesn't actually do anything. So let me make it so it does. Let's store first name, this first name, into this, into my member. How do I say my member? Exactly. So this dot first name is going to be first name. So this is, is this. These two are the same. But this dot first name refers to that. Got it? Okay. So let's also do this dot last name, last name. So when, P, when new person gets called and the new object is created, the new person is created, the first name of that member is assigned to Joe. So Joe goes into here and then gets assigned to the member first name. And Jackson goes here and therefore gets assigned to this dot last name, so here. So this gets Joe, this one gets Jackson. Age gets nothing. So let me make another constructor where the user can pass in first name, last name, and age. And then let me do this dot age is age. So now I have the option of possibly passing in an age for Joe Jackson. If I call Joe Jackson 33, which constructor will it call? This one. Right? Look at the arguments, right? It takes a string, a string, and a number. String, string, number. If I do this, which one will it call? The first one, because it takes a string and a string. String, string, right there. Make sense? Okay. So, let me call the second constructor. So now I have P, which is a person. And that person has a Joe as the first name, Jackson as last name, and 33 as their age. Question, can I now do system.out.println p.firstName? I can. Do you know why? Because this main is declared inside of between this and that. And remember that anything private is only visible inside of the class that it's made in. Remember that? So now instead of doing the main here, let me put main somewhere else. Hang on. So let me, let's go in here and let me create person in here. Ah, so let's get rid of that for a second. What, what's happening? Why can't I use person here? It's not imported. It can't find it. Java doesn't know where person is. So I have to do import. And where is person? Well, it's in their test person, right? It's in the test package person. Good. But now look, first name is red. There's an error here. Why? It's private, exactly. So let me ask you a question. How can I make it so that I can access the first name of the person? Yeah, so here I could, hang on. So in here I could make a function, a method if you will, a public method, like get name or get first name, which can return this dot first name. This is private, but the method is public. So when I call this method from the outside, it then refers to its internal member. Raise your hands if that didn't make sense to you. Fine, good, okay. So now let's make another method called getFullName. So full name is going to return the full name of this person. And full name is this dot first name, concatenated with empty string, 
concatenate with this dot last name. Make sense? So then here, if I say p dot get first name, and I run this, hang on. One sec. There. Eh? Oh, sorry, get first name. I meant get full name. There you go. Okay, now I get Joe Jackson. Is anyone confused as to how I did what I just did? It's clear? Okay, so let's keep going. Now, let me create another class called doctor. So, name. Uh, doctor.java. What package is this in? Well, it's in test, uh, sorry, package, test.doctor. Sorry, test. Public class doctor. Okay, so what are some attributes that a doctor has? Well, a doctor has a first name, a doctor has a last name. A doctor has an age. A doctor might have a specialty. Right? Uh, perhaps a sound. Okay, let's, let's just keep it for this much for now. Okay, so question. What is a doctor? A doctor is a person, right? A doctor is a kind of a person. It's a more specific kind of a person, right? And in fact, not only is it a person, it actually shares the members of a person. A person has a first name, a last name, an age, right? Look, see, first name, last name, age. And so a doctor, again, is a person, right? So what I can do is instead of copying all these members again, I can do what's known as inheritance. I can inherit. What inherit means is that doctor becomes a person. Here's how you make a doctor a person. You write extend person. Now, right now there's a problem. The problem is, is that I have to implement constructors that I've implemented here. So notice that we have two constructors here, right? Here I need to implement a constructor, public doctor, and doctor needs to take first name, hang on, super constructor, wait, 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 wait. Doctor first. Ah, sorry, sorry, one sec, one sec, one sec. Okay, so let me explain what the heck I just did. So forgetting this part, forgetting that, what is this? It's a constructor that takes first name and last name as arguments, right? So typically what you would want to do is you would do something like this dot first name, first name, and then something like this dot last name, last name, right? But here's the thing, you don't need to re-implement first and last name because you've already inherited from person. In other words, you know that person already has a first name, last name, and age. So when you inherit from person, you get these for free. Doctor already has first name and last name and age because a doctor is a person who already has first name, last name, and age. Let me explain it a different way. Person has some attributes, right? Let's forget about all this other stuff. Well, actually, let's just comment it out. 
Okay, so what does a person have? What is a person class? It has a first name, last name, age, and a constructor. A doctor already has, by the virtue of the fact that it has inherited from person, already has a first name, last name, and age. That's what inheritance means. It means you become the other thing. Does it get the constructor? It gets the constructor, but here's the point. See this super? This <laughs> super constructor. This means call that. Let's do it again. This is calling this. The origin, the parent constructor. If there are two constructors. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So in this case, there are two constructors, right? There's this one and there's this one. Depending on the arguments, right? So if I pass in, which constructor will this call? No. And you can only extend from one thing, which is actually kind of weird if you think about it. You can only be one other thing. Now that thing can be another thing. So let me give you an example. Imagine you have animal, and then you have human, and then you have a doctor. A doctor is a human, a human is an animal, right? So that means, that means the human would subclass from animal, and a, pers and a doctor would subclass from human. Make sense? Okay. Um, if I did this, which constructor would it call? The first one. So, what, so super refers to your parent. Think of it this way. By the way, uh, you know the whole object-oriented programming thing? It's like one of the classes you're going to take, introduction to object or It's basically this stuff. It's like objects and classes inheriting from classes, creating objects. What, so I'm just giving you a crash course so you know what's coming. All right, so you have a person which has a first name. So a person has a first name and last name, right? You have a doctor. A doctor can either have its own first name, right? But to make things easier, all you have to do, wait for it. OK, so look, instead of doing this, what you can do is that. In other words, you simply say this is an instance of this. In other words, this inherits from this, and this already has this and this. Therefore, this now has this and this. If you don't need the constructor, so you have to use the constructor, because the constructor is required to make this. You get it? So because it's needed to make this, if you want to be one of these, you have to make this. Make sense? Uh, someone had a question down here. Yeah. So then person can inherit from animal. Yes, so anything that's here, let's say animal has species. Yeah, how about hair color? Species, fine, fine, species, yeah. Species. So now doctor has first name, last name, and species. Super gives you your parent. But if you do super dot species, it will go get this guy. Got it? So super means the stuff above me. So now in here, watch this. So now in here, if I do this dot first name, I can't do that because first name is private, right?
But now I can. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Okay. So um, I can modify first name. I can also write this dot first name. Notice I have a this first name, even though it's not up here. Why? It's already present. It's already present because I've inherited it from person. Go. Add an. Yes. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So the constructor can be changed. Look. Let's say the the doctor has a specialty. Right, so now, hang on, the constructor takes the doctor's first name, last name, and then specialty. I then use the first name and last name to construct my, to call my person constructor, and then I can store this dot specialty equals specialty. Make sense? Yes? Okay, so now watch this. Remember person, we had a get full name. You remember this? So now in here, when I, when I create, let's create a doctor. What's a specialty for a doctor? Okay, good. So if I save this and run, I get Joe Jackson, right? Because that's the name of my doctor. Now watch this. I can now go into my doctor and change what get full name does. Public string get full name. This time when I run this, what will get full name give me? Gives me hi. So one of the things that you notice then is that in my doctor, I can change or I can override the behavior of a function. But suppose I wanted to return doctor this.first name plus space plus this dot last name. Ooh, I don't have last name. Why? It's private. So, but notice there's get full name. What does get full name return? First name and last name combined, right? With a, str with a string in between. So watch this. So from here, I can instead do super dot get full name. What do you suppose this does? This super means parent. So get full name means call the get full name of my parent. You get it? Person is my parent, right? Person has a get full name. It returns first name plus last name. Yes? In here, I have doctor inherit from person. I override the get full name, but then I call my parents get full name to get the first name and last name, and I concatenate with doctor. And the output for that is, wait for it, Dr. Do Joe Jackson. Make sense? That's called method overriding. Overriding means you, take, you, you write over the original. Okay, so watch this. Suppose person had a function called get full name. If this then implemented get full name, when you make a doctor and you call get full name, it will call this, not this. Right? You can kind of see why. But this can call this by doing super dot get 
full name. That will then call that. Huh? Yeah. Person? No. No, person is the name of the class. No. Super just gives you a reference to the parent and then dot whatever you want from the parent. Got it? This, what I just explained to you in like, how long has it been? 15 minutes? Is like the first two weeks of object oriented programming. If you feel lost, don't worry. I'm not actually going to quiz you on this. Because that's part, it's a different class. I don't want to press you yet. But I still want you to know it. Because that way, when you go to the next class, you'll have a background and you'll be able to understand what they're talking about. How, raise your hands if you're completely confused as to what inheritance is. OK, so you get it. OK, good. In that case, let's go back to basic Java. Does anyone remember the difference between static and non-static members and, and uh, m members and methods? You do? Well, yeah, I'm guessing most of you probably don't know. OK, so let me explain. It's very easy. It's very easy. Look, let's go back to this example of person. A person, suppose, has a function, public int foo, which returns 1. OK? In order for me to call foo, I first have to make a person. Person p, new person. And now I can do p.foo. With me? If I, may, if I went here and I made a static public static int zoo, which returns a 1, for that, I don't have to make a person. I can just do person.zoo. Person, shoot, hang on. Person, this, is a class. P is an instance of the class. You get it? What is a class? It's a template that you use to make things, right? So in this example, I'm making something new, which I'm calling P. So P is a person. It's an instance of a person. I can have 25 of these. I can do. I just have to name them differently. There. I now have four instances of a person. I have four people that I made. Why is it? Because I'm not using it anywhere. If I use it, um, it goes away. It's a warning. It's saying you made something, you never used it. Why? Don't worry. Non-static members and functions are attached to instances like this. Static ones are attached to the class. Let me give you an example where static methods might be useful. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. OK, let's create a class called math. Math.java. OK, and this is in the package uh, test, public class math. And let's give it some functions like, I don't know, um, add. Public int add, which takes int a, int b, and returns their sum. Let's do another one, like public. How about factorial? Oh, this, this is a fun time to do this. Factorial int b. And let's have this implement a recursive factorial function. How do I do it? Or zero? Uh, 
Oh, sorry. Very nice. Then. Very nice. Very nice. OK, good. OK, so I have these two functions, right? Now, in order to use these functions, I have to first make a math. So uh, hang on, let me import it. And now here, I have to do something like math m is new math. And now I can do m dot factorial and pass it with, you know, factorial of 5 there. And if I system that out, ugh, that, it will print. Eh? Wait, 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 hang on. Package test. It's colliding with another math thing, hang on. No, it worked, it worked, sorry, look, it's working. It's working, okay. Um, okay, by the way, uh, just one quick thing, hang on. Okay, I just didn't save, sorry. It's fine, good, okay. So you get what I'm saying. So I made a new instance of math, put it into m, and then did m.factorial and got five, right? But it turns out that if I didn't want to make an instance of math, I could have attached these functions directly on, on the class. And now here I could have just done math.factorial. Did that make sense? No. Okay. You can add functions to either a class, which is the template, or to the instance that the class makes. To add it to the class, you use static. To add it to the actual instance, it's not static. <coughs> if it's static, it's attached to the class. So you just do the class name, class name, and then you call the function, you're done. If it's not static, if it's public not static, so int foo, let's say, which returns one, in that case, to use it, I first have to make an instance, then do m.foo. Got it? Static attached to the class, non-static attached to the instance. Go. Yes. OK, so static typically means non-changing. So there's like one thing. So this is why static is attached to the class, because you only have one class. Oh, non-static, it gets, you, you get a, a separate one for every version that you get. For every instance, it gets its own version of that function. Think of it that way. Okay? You do. So when you don't, when you don't specify a constructor, by default, it gives you something like this. Uh, by default, it makes a constructor for you. But then you can override it by specifying your own constructors. OK? Yes? Yes? Good question. Why do you need? OK, so the question is obvious. Why have the two different kinds of functions? Why have static functions and non-static functions? The difference has to do with state. Here's what I mean by this. Remember this? Okay, 
in a static environment, there is no this. Because there is no this. There's no me. It's just a template. In an instance, you can say this to refer to that instance. It gives you a warning. You're not really supposed. If you do that, you're referring to the class, not the instance. So you're not really supposed to use this. Look, look, look. Look. Watch this. Suppose this is not static. Int zoo. Right? So that me here, let's do let's do an actual example. You have a person who has an, an um, public or sort of private string name. Every person has a name, right? So you can't have it be static. It has to be you need a different name for every person. Yes? But then you make a static like public static foo. It lights up right away. Cannot use this in a static context. Yeah, because what are you getting in setting? You're getting setting data, right? But you can't store non, you can only store static data, which means you can only have one instance of that data. Okay, let me give you an example. Yeah, you can do this. Oh, duplicate. If I did this, this means that every person that ever gets made, they don't have their own individual name because name is part of the template. It's not part of the instance. Okay, tell you what. I will be satisfied for the time being that you don't understand why the two methods exist. If you don't understand that yet, it's okay. Don't feel bad. But I want you to know the difference. And the difference again is this. Static methods are assigned or attached to the template, the class. So if you want to call a static method, you say the class name dot the method, if it's static. If it's not static, it belongs to the instance, which means you first have to use the class to make an instance, then do that instance dot and then call the method. Is the difference clear, at least? Okay. So the reason we'll eventually get to as we move forward. It's always more efficient to use static because you only have one. Right? So it's less. It's much more optimal, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So remember how I told you guys that in programming, uh, the goal is to break down a big problem into small problems, right? And so there, so just looking at code, you can imagine that's the equivalent of saying instead of writing one big long piece of code, instead break it down into parts. What are some ways we have seen where we can take a big piece of code and break it down into functions? Good, very good. So you can wrap individual parts of the code with these things that we called functions, right? In Java, you can also further wrap functions with classes, right? And you put them in separate files, right? And then you put the files maybe in separate directories and you organize them into packages and you have your code sort of separated out in this way. Once you have code separated out in this way, you have to then try to use it together to compose more and more complex things. So for example, you have a class that knows how to deal with people you have a class that knows how to deal with messages. You have a class that knows how to deal with images. You want to put it all together to say that a person can have an image, that this message was, was created by this person. It was updated by this person. It was liked by this person. And in this way, by putting all these pieces together, you create a, a conceptual model of your entire system. If you think of Facebook, right? 
Face, think of all the different objects or all the different classes that Facebook has, right? It has a notion of people, of users, if you will, right? It has a notion of messages. It has a notion of likes, right? It has a notion of instant messages. It has a notion of, um, the, what's the things that go on your timeline, the, the feed news articles, right? All of these things are classes that have attributes that then also have references to other classes. For example, you might have an image, but there are tags associated with this image, right? So you can say, okay, this image at this XY coordinate is this, you know, Joe. This other XY coordinate, it's Mike. And so when you look at it and you mouse over, you see, oh, this is Joe, this is Mike. So the image object has references to instances of other classes. You also have lots of images, instances of images, right? So the class is the thing that explains what an image is. What is an image? Well, it's something that maybe has a size, it has like some data or maybe a reference, a URL reference to the where the actual file is. You then have people, a person has a first name, a last name, maybe a profile picture, a user ID, etc., etc. You have likes, and likes maybe have references of who liked it and what they liked, right? So maybe it's an object that basically has two references, right? Here's the person who liked it, here's what they liked, right? So every time you add a like, you say, okay, this person added a like, and you increment the counter. And in this way, you keep expanding. Now, the question is, how do you take all of this code and you put it together? There are two ways of doing this, and it depends on the relationship between these objects. There are objects that have a relationship where, like a like, I like that, right? So the relationship is I have a reference like to that other object. There is also an is a relationship. So for example, a doctor is a person, right? So there are two ways to stick code together. One is by inheritance. A doctor becomes a person. It inherits all of the attributes of a person. If a person has a name, the doctor now has a name. If a person had an age, the doctor now has an age. Okay? That's called inheritance. Okay? Um, there's also composition. Composition means you don't inherit, you reference. So an example of composition might be a person has a friend. You don't become your friend, you reference your friend. You say, I'm a person and I have a friend, which is another object separate from me. Make sense? Yeah, I'll, I'll give an example, sure. So think of it as this way. You have a class for person. It has a friend reference, maybe an array because you have more than one friend, right? An array of type person. Right? So you have people in your array. And as you have friends, you simply add them to your array. Make sense? So you have a person with a friend reference to a list of people. Address is a good one. A person has an address. An address has lots of attributes, right? It has street, city, uh, country, all of these other attributes that an address has. Would you inherit from address? Would you become an address? No, you would reference an address. Right, so, so no, no, a reference is you have a class for address, mm -hmm. you have a class for person. You make an instance of a person and an instance of an address, and the person then points to that address. Yeah. Got it, okay. So how do you actually do what I just said? Let's create an address. Package test, oh, package test, public class address. What are some things that an address has? <laughs> Continent, um, street, city, country, um, whatever. Let's. This is fine. Good. Okay, so we have this. Let's make a constructor. And let's have the constructor take these things. So street, city, 
I have to say what they are. That's a string, that's a string. Huh? It might have made a mistake, but no, you have to have a type, right, in order for it to. All right, so now do this.street is street, this.city is city, and then this.country country is country. Good. Now I have a person. Uh, so a person also has a constructor, public person. Let's have it take a first name and last name. This dot first name is first name. This dot last name is last name. We need to make those members. Good. Now, a person should have an address. So let's make one. Private address. Address. Okay, so what is address? It's a variable that will have inside of it an address, right? Yes? Good. So now uh, let's actually use this stuff. So hang on. So let's make a person. Okay, a person takes a, a first name, Joe Fu Yun. Okay, so now I need to put an address into person. So let me make one address. What do you think is the problem? It doesn't know where address is, right? I have to import it. Okay, now it knows address, but now the constructor is giving me a problem. Exactly, it needs a street, a city, and a country, right? So let's do it. So what's the street? Paramyan Sanchos. City is Yerevan, and country is Armenia. Oh, look, look, look. Why is A a problem? Because I used it here. There. Now we're safe. <laughs> Wait, test. Add to do a re Packet add. OK, there we go. OK, everything is good. OK, so now I need to put this address into the address attribute of a person, right? So I can do person address equals A. No. Oh, sorry. A. Ah, P. P address is A. Why can't I do this? It's private. Look. See? Private. Private address. How can I make it so I can? You don't understand. Okay. Do you understand what private means? Do you understand that address is a member and that it stores inside of it things that are addresses? Okay. Last name stores strings, yes? Okay. Address stores address. Yes? Same logic. Okay. So now I want to put an address that I made here. See, I made an address. I made a person and I made an address. Yes? Now I want to put this A, this address, into the address attribute of person, P. But I can't do this because address is private. So what I'll do instead is I'll do public, does it return anything? Void set address 
It takes an address, A, and it does this, that address is A. I can, oops, I can now call set address with A. Still confused? It's okay, say you're confused. Huh? In chair minchikere. Okay, so watch this. See how it's private? If I made this public, then from here I could do p.address is a. But because it's private, I, ca I can't do that, right? Uh, I'm showing it to you. So, so see this function here? Notice how it does almost the same thing. It, you give it an address, and it sets that address onto this address, this. This dot address refers to this. A is whatever argument I'm taking from the function. Yes? So if you go back here, A is the argument, it's the new address. P is the new person I made, so I'm setting the address on the person. P is an instance. So look, I'm constructing a new person and putting it into P. Yeah. Think of it this way. If I had five people, every one of them needs their own address, right? Because they're different people. Look, let me make another, another person. There. So now what I could do... Let's say P, P and P1 are like brother and sister. They live in the same address. Right. P1.set address A. But let's say P2 lives somewhere else. Did that make sense? I have three people that I made, P, P1, P2. Their names are Joe, Mike, and G. Joe and Mike both live in on Bahramant 24, but G lives at whatever the heck that is. Yeah, so you could do p2.address. But the problem is it's private, so you can't do that. But yes, address is attached to P2. Yeah? You get it? Who doesn't get what I just did? Oh, everyone gets it. Cool. Quiz? No. No. If I don't close this, no problem. OK. So do you guys see how, what I mean by this? A person doesn't become an address. It simply refers to an address. So here's what we did. Here's what this does. We have a template. Jesus Christ. We have a template called address and a template called person. We made two addresses, right? A and A2. We made three people, P, P1, P2. We then assigned A, P, P's address to A and P1's address to A. So this address points to that, and this address points to that. And then P2's address points to A2. 
Yeah, set, yeah, exactly. Here, let me make it easier. Let me make it public. Is that easier? Huh? What do you want me to open? Okay, forget this for now. Is this clear? And that's clear. Okay, so now instead of just doing dot, I'm going to call a function that will do it for me. It's one more step. Look, p dot foo with a. And let's have foo, ah, what is it? Do you see how that is the same thing? Right, this A, which is this address, goes into here and then gets assigned to this dot address, which is this, which is the same thing as this. Finally, other questions? Assertion. Yeah. <laughs> I will hold this on the screen for a while for you to be amazed by. No, but there's a video. <laughs> you can rewind. The problem is I don't have it on GitHub because I'm writing it right now. And I keep deleting and writing and deleting and writing. Okay. No problem. So, very quickly, since we don't have a lot of time, let's try to model something. Not Facebook, where I'm tired of that. Let's do university. Let's do a university, okay? Um, no, model, as in create these classes that define the structure of what you see around you. What do you see around you? You. Me. Who, what am I? Who am I? Well, I'm a lot of things, aren't I? Okay. Now, that's an instance. It's not a class. Um, so let's uh, have a name. Um, no, let's do student. Okay. Not guys, notice how we already have a person class. So let me just extend person because a student is a person, right? So I don't have to, wa I don't want to write first name, last name. I want to just get it. So I can get it just by extending person. Sorry, extends person. I need a constructor, public student, uh, which takes some arguments. And then I need to call super with what is the constructor that a person needs. It needs a first name and last name. So that means here I have to pass in two strings. Got it? So in order to make a new person, I have to know the first name and last name of that person. Got it? Because the constructor requires it. So let me specify that. Sorry. 
Okay, what else does a student have? Uh, GPA, okay, good. So private int, uh, oh, actually, it's a double GPA. Uh, <laughs> pri pri uh, what else? Major. Major? Okay. Public, double, get. Public. <laughs> okay, maybe this will do. Okay, so I have a person. Uh, what does this person have? What else? Something that they have. I meant more like relationships with other objects. Friends. Friends. Private. Let's have this be an array of, can, can friends be just students? Or can they be other people as well? Okay, so that means I need an array of students or people? Okay, so in our constructor, Let's make the new array. In charm? Very good question. So look, look what he just asked. Guys, pay attention to this. He said, I made an array of people. Can students go into the array, which is not meant for students, it's meant for people, right? Exactly. Ask yourself this. Is a student a person? Yes or no? You have your answer. <laughs> Who said no? It, it is in our world. In our world, a student is a person. In fact, you can do this. Watch, 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 watch. Um. Look at this. I created a student and I put it into a variable that knows how to hold a person in it. Typically, you would expect this, right? Yes? You made a student, you put it into a variable that holds a student? This is OK, too. Why? A student is a person. What next? Yeah, I think I tortured you enough for today. Hangis, hangis. He shouts name for inheritance. Champs to gelu. That's for relax. So I kiss over it. Kinch kan karak. What you want to pull from? You still make a student with everything that you expect. Ha, che bytes p make a yete on this get yes image because start no. Passi. Chista. Chista is awesome. No, when you treat p, p as a per, a person. You're not allowed to use things that are specific to student. See? If I make this student, then I can do set GPA. It's part of it, but you don't see it because you don't you assume it's only a person. No, no, no. That's not why. It's not because it's pre okay, we'll talk later, because people are going to sleep. Um, pause sec.